You know that awkward moment when a single product changes your entire thought process about that particular type of product? Hi. Welcome to this full review, not a bally short, of the MachineWise Prisma, an absolute game-changing balisong trainer that might not fully live up to even my own hype. MachineWise is by far one of the most fascinating new balisong makers in the hobby. For Will and I, his products have really made us think. Mm. Made us laugh. <laughs> and most importantly, made us moan. Oh. Dalen, MachineWise himself, is not only trying to make awesome ballast songs, but also make them as affordable and available as he can. And we're not talking every few months or even every few weeks, but almost every week. With how much work the Serif takes, which is a lot of work because it's so beautiful, look at it. <laughs> There's no way he could produce these regularly enough to drop a lot of them every week. A spench. A spench. Especially since the entire machine-wise operation is currently a two-person team in a small little shop, including Dalen. <laughs> What's a two-person team like in a small room? I don't know, Will. Crunched into a small spot right now. Hello. Enter the Prisma. Prisma? Hardly no! It feels so powerful. <laughs> so the Prisma actually rose from the ashes of what was supposed to be the Marin Light V2. Will and I loved the Marin Light, but had to send that review unit back to Dalen. So eventually I personally reached out to Dalen to try to get one. Unfortunately, the last production of Marin Lights was a failure. And so Dalen offered not only to send me a Prisma trainer, but also a Prisma live blade. And he wouldn't let me pay for him, which is still Dalen, I'm coming for you. I'm gonna give you my money. More on the live blade later. Over the last few months that I've had it, I have loved the trainer and the live blade. And I actually picked up a live blade Bowie Cracker and V2.5, borrowed a Cracker and V2.5 trainer from an incredible VIP Patreon supporter, and spent a ton of time with all my other ballast songs, specifically so I could review the Prisma. But as I've started to learn more tricks, and I promise I'm getting there, but turns out working 60 to 70 hours a week and trying to learn battle song tricks, not the easiest thing to do. I've been jumping a lot back and forth between all my different battle songs, and during that process, my opinion on the Prisma started to shift. Why? According to basic narrative structure and the demands of our algorithmic overlords, telling you that too soon would make me spontaneously combust. So the reason that my opinion has started to shift is because- <laughs> But you know what probably won't make you spontaneously combust? Merch and balisong cases from willhirsch.gay. We not only have dope new shirts, stickers, woo, and brand new cup designs, but at long last, the Will Hirsch balisong cases are officially live. There are five different awesome cases to choose from, with the one I personally use being able to hold 15 balisongs with a ton of extra storage space, which is under 70 bucks. And they're designed entirely by Will and are manufactured by my case builder. So definitely check them out. They're genuinely great for organizing and transporting your collection. And the only way to stop Will when he inevitably decides to charge into you head first in the middle of shooting a <laughs> Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's talk about build and design. As I mentioned before, the Prisma is technically a Marin Light V2 with slightly boxier handles and a different texture. The three hole cutouts are still here on the handles and jimping, which goes up much higher up the handles than before. This blade has this cool fractal design to it as well as the machine wise logo. But mine's a special little boy where the logo's cut all the way through the blade. And guess what? It's right side up. <laughs> Not upside down! Get your shit together. <laughs> the biggest change? The new machine texture on the faces of the handles that feels very soft in the hand, very similar to the Cracker Racken and the, oh my lord Christ, that was an accident. The Glider Antarctic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord Christ, that was 100% real. It's machined out of 6061 aluminum, which is a lot of numbers that might not make much sense, but it's a common metal that's used in a lot of balisongs these days. It's certainly not the most durable metal, 
Ow. But it can keep up with regular abuse. The blade is hardened 410 stainless steel, which is also used in a bunch of other Balasong trainers like the Squid Industries Nautilus and Cracker Racket. The little Zen Pin boys are press fit and it runs on bushings and has really, really good pivot hardware and some of the best tolerances that I've ever seen on a Balasong. That also doesn't need thread locker. Why? Because Dalen himself hates having to use that icky gooey stuff. Fred Locker is really only useful to feed a Brandon clone. Yeah, yeah, get it, you get, yeah, get it, fucking, fucking, yeah, yeah, open up, yeah. Reassembly is a bit tough due to the very tight tolerances and requires you to put it back together in a specific way by pinching the washers together against the blade and attacking it at a specific angle. So it's tricky at first, but you do get used to it. Overall, the build is incredibly solid and Dalen is very particular about making sure that all of his products are super well-tuned, which totally shows. Design is a subjective thing, of course, but I really like it. But of course, build and design affects how we introduce talking about flipping. I'm so sorry about this. What's new flipping dude? The one who goes Yahoo. You're gonna flip that ballast song. I see you flipping dude. You're gonna need some lube. What's new flipping dude? What's new flipping dude? We're gonna follow you. On Instagram, at the Brandon Baker. Yeah, that's probably good. We did a whole musical number in the Balsong Collection 2022 video. Squid Industry Snakes, the Triton, the Mako, and the Squid Trainer V2. Talus on Covenant, Firefly, and all of these I'm borrowing. So two musical numbers in one year is probably good for now? Unless. Oh, say can you flip? <laughs> As mentioned in the title and beginning of this video, this Balasong really changed how I look at the whole flipping hobby in general. I know that sounds a little dramatic, and I know I've cucked you so far for the sake of suspense, but let me get this out of the way. This thing is fucking sick to flip, at least for somebody at my skill level. As mentioned before, the whole pattern, anodization feel, machine texture, and the jimping make this a great flipper, especially for the price. Truthfully, the thing that made me fall in love with it initially was the ever apparent, moan worthy, signature, machine wise, clack. Oh! It has that deep clack with a very slight ring to it that is just an absolute joy to listen to. ASMR. But here's a very well-kept secret. I still have a lot of ballast song tricks that I need to learn. There it goes. I've been putting more and more time each day into trying to learn new stuff, but it has been a challenge. I've been learning to do a lot more rollovers and aerials. I've also been learning to do a full twirl and the tried and true behind the eight ball. As I've jumped back and forth between stuff like the Krakarakin, the Nautilus, the Seraph, the Vulp, woo, the Antarctic, and the Squiddy, which are all my favorite battle songs to learn new tricks on, especially the Nautilus, review right there, I've unfortunately found myself messing up a lot more with specifically the Prisma, especially when doing rollover kind of tricks. <laughs> I talk with Will a lot about this, and I promise he'll give his thoughts later. It comes down to the grip, but particularly the weight distribution, which is just a bit wonky. How wonky? Well, we're talking lightweight, long, blocky handles, and it's very, very neutral. And for those that don't know, that's a very particular combination. Not at all enough to make it a bad flipping experience. It is a lot of fun to flip, at least for Will and I. But it's been the first time that I've noticed myself struggling with a ballast song that, on paper, fits my preferences perfectly. It is grippy, if not a bit slippery, especially in more humid climates. Like where Will and I live in Georgia, where you walk outside and it's just immediately Ah, what a beautiful day in Atlanta. I am so... Compared to what we consider the best all around Balasong for most people, the Krakarakan V2.5, the Krakarakan just has a better balance, a much more hefty weight, and has a grip like everywhere that you need it. Generally with this thing, I can just kind of pick it up and go and not really have any issues. As you can see, there is a distinct difference yeah, I, I don't feel myself struggling with this at all. So with other ballast songs, I don't really have a lot of issues flipping it. Whereas with the Prisma, I really have to focus whenever I'm flipping. If I were asked to improve the Prisma, I would suggest machining a line into the side of the handles right here, like what you see on the Cracker Rackin, and making the bite handle indicator a little more effective, which Dalen said he already has plans to do. 
It's only really noticeable in Chaplin's and would probably only really seriously hurt a Brandon clone. Oh, come on, give me a little bit of credit. It's not gonna hurt me that much. <laughs> it does technically have an adjustable balance with the screws at the bottom here, which can be taken out. But with it already being very neutral, if you remove the weights, it makes it made bias. Check out the podcast today. Which is a bummer since I prefer handle bias with the kind of tricks that I do. So it would have been nice to have some better options. And lastly, it comes in a very plain package. This just this little boy, it's unlabeled. There's a sticker, but that's a far cry from the Serif unboxing experience, which is top tier. So why was I all dramatic earlier and like, oh, it's changed how I look at the whole Balasong hobby in general? Well, it genuinely has. A bow song like this represents where I'm at as a flipper. Up until this point, things like balance and weight and grip, they certainly mattered, but I didn't have an amazing grasp on why it mattered. Especially since all the tricks I knew how to do were pretty basic. But with the Prisma, it's been teaching me that I need to adjust how I flip certain balisongs so that I could properly do tricks with them. And this just represents how fascinating the balisong hobby is and how you never really actually stop having something that you can improve on, even for the top tier flippers that you see at Bally Comp and stuff like that. While the Prisma doesn't fit all flipping styles as well as other balisongs, it does reinforce why some can find it to be the best balisong they've ever flipped like it's turned out to be for our friends Camaro EE and Telestro. My skill level versus the number and variety of balisongs that I have is very unique to say the least, because I'm a quirky. Ah! And I think the Prisma just kind of represents that uniqueness. Lastly, as I mentioned before, I do have a live blade version. And I do actually enjoy how this flips slightly better because the balance fits my preference more. Unfortunately though, Dalen's plan for the Prisma is that it will only ever be a trainer. So that just means I'm a special little boy with a special little toy. There's a Tinder bio for you. But of course the unique flipping experience isn't the only thing that makes this such a game changer. It's everything that I just went over combined with the incredible value proposition and availability of this. The price of this starts at $150, which is mind-blowing for the quality of it. That's a full 30% cheaper than the Cracker Racken Trainer. Does it flip better than a Cracker Racken? No. Which is, of course, just our opinion at the end of the day, but we still find the Prisma to be super impressive. And in terms of the price and availability, this isn't a situation where Dalen, for example, is being aided by the power of Chinese manufacturing, like with the Bulp or those Mark Polo guys that everybody keeps wanting us to talk about. Maybe one day. They're doing almost everything in-house with this in the United States with one other person pushing out at least 30 of these per week at a very high quality. That may not seem like a lot at all, but for a two-person team, that's exceptionally impressive. Machine-wise is starting to enter a realm of Squid Industries level availability, which is very exciting. So does that mean you have to be there the minute that these drop? Yeah, for right now, yeah, that part kind of sucks. But they've been making a lot of these available in various different colors each week, and trying to get one once a week is much better than other makers where you have to wait months between drops. Unfortunately, you can only really get them in North America right now, but MachineWise has big aspirations to expand a lot in the coming years. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up like Will, who currently has his body wrapped around 69 Brandon clones. You realize that we have like literally no way to pull that off with our VFX budget, right? That's, okay, yeah, that's very true. En enable us on Patreon. We only need like 60 bucks to do that, right? I, well, I... When I first got the Prisma, I genuinely thought that it was my new favorite Balasong trainer. But in short, it's not. It doesn't beat the Cracker Rack and Trainer or the Nautilus for me. But it does sit above the vast majority of my collection. And I do very much love to flip it. It's just taken some time to get used to for me and it probably will for you too. And I really hope that the Prisma remains a mainstay of Machine Wise's lineup and doesn't meet the same fate of being discontinued like so many of his other products have in the past. But you know what it is time to discontinue? Me giving my thoughts on this battle song. What do you think, William Ulrich von Lichtengay? Oh yeah, that's a name. <laughs>
So the Prisma is a very interesting ballast song for a lot of reasons. First of all, it has a very good price to performance. And the truth is this thing is a very high quality flipper. It does most of the tricks that I ask it to do with very little resistance. However, there is a bit of a weirdness to get over in terms of the balance. I think the big difference here is not necessarily that it's super neutral or handle biased or anything like that balance wise. It actually comes down to the construction of the knife itself. You see with a handle that's this light and this long, by adding a thick steel weight at the end, you end up moving the mass more towards the end of this long pendulum that you have. Stuff like the crack racken is a great example of this. As you can see, the crack racken is slightly shorter and the blade is especially substantially shorter. While it's not not fluid, it sort of wants to get away from you more than I'm used to. This comes down to a property known as moment of inertia, which is uh, relatively complex. And uh, I actually looked up a, a Wikipedia article for this and you can fast forward through this part, Brandon, I don't mind, but it's a uh, inertia of the system. Essentially what that's all to say is that the actual operating principles of this in physics terms is kind of weird compared to other balisons. But yeah, overall, from me, this thing gets pretty high marks, especially for the price. But anyways, let's talk more about the moment of inertia. Now, the moment of inertia is <laughs> being as unique of a flipper as it is at the price that it's at, and you can actually buy the damn thing regularly, puts this in a really good spot. It takes getting used to, but that can be said for pretty much any balisong. The improvements that Dalen can make are pretty straightforward, so we're really excited about his future as a maker. And having more options that aren't just made in China or take months to actually get is always a good thing. Also, for anybody curious about the BS score for the Prisma, here it is. Ho oh, oh. ho! Notice that it has great tuning, great durability, great flipping, and exceptional value because it's machine-wise. And holy shit, how does he do it? Speaking of things that are good, Patreon. We have one. And the people over there are incredible. Their support allows us the ability to do crazy visual effects like spontaneous combustion. Wait, no, not again. <laughs> and allows us to buy these ballast songs for review and keep this whole operation going in general. So thank you to everybody who supports us. It's surreal having so many of you to talk to and interact with. Even our lowest tier patrons provide a ton of support for us. So consider donating. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to see if I can figure out this whole spontaneous combustion problem. And I think the solution is, is doing an entire shot of Loctite. Wait, no, Brandon, holy shit. Oh, no. Oh. Mm.